Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. The National Weather Service. Good Wednesday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with you on the 6th of January. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information, and you can find that anytime online at weather.gov slash Alaska. Well, give us a call at the Weather Info line at 800-472-0391. You can get to us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on YouTube, where you'll find your daily afternoon map briefings. Simply search for AKWX-TV, short for Alaska Weather TV, on the search bar in uh, Google or on YouTube, and you'll get a look at this entire program here. Even after hours there, you'll be able to find and, and skip to maybe the marine section that you're a little more interested in if you got stuck out on the boat for a little longer than expected earlier today. Here's a look at some of the winds that have been reported across the sensors in the Aleutians, the central and eastern chain up into the Alaska Peninsula. The numbers are a little bit on the smaller side here, but Cold Bay showing 70 mile an hour for a gust around St. Paul, 67, 74 in St. George. That might be a little bit suspect there, but uh, certainly some stronger winds flowing through the region. And Adak and Atka reporting gusts there in the order of 44 to 96 miles per hour. Again, we're still checking to see if this one is a uh, legitimate report at this point, 76 in Dutch Harbor. Now, all this is around that Aleutian low pressure system that is moving northward now. And because of this, we still have high wind warnings out for the central Aleutians and for the Pribilovs. The Pribilovs will see uh, that uh, warning go until about 6 o'clock tonight. The central Aleutians are expected to see the warning continue until about midnight tonight, where gusts could reach upwards of 85 miles per hour for the Pribilovs. Conditions should be improving now and should continue to do so as we head into the evening and overnight hours. Here's a look at that storm on the satellite picture. It is a beauty from outer space, probably not the most pretty thing you've seen if you're down there on the ground next to it. Uh, you can see the spiraling uh, shape here drawing itself northward into the southern Bering Sea. Uh, some of the stronger winds wrapping around it now. Uh, coming into ADAC and uh, not really affecting ADCA uh, with the strongest of winds, as you saw in some of the gust reports uh, just a moment ago. So the strongest winds zipping right into ADAC and uh, missing ADCA at this point with the, the worst of the weather anyway. Around the Pribilovs, a much different situation. The winds have been coming in from the east and southeast throughout the day. And as long as this is moving northward, you won't get into that stronger northerly flow coming in behind the weather system. While that's going on for the southern bearing in the North Pacific, we look out across the Gulf of Alaska and don't see a whole lot. <laughs> Things are pretty quiet there. We've got uh, generally a clear sky and pretty calm conditions across the eastern Gulf by comparison. Across the interior, uh, cold air is certainly in place. That's what a lot of this murky color is on the satellite picture. It is a satellite looking for uh, colder cloud tops and instead of that finding very cold surface conditions across Northway where temperatures were well below zero earlier today. If we look up northward, you can see low pressures also lifting toward the pole and that is drawing clouds north and moving them offshore. Winds have been fairly light across the north slope uh, area as well as the Chukchi Sea. And as we get into more of a southerly flow, we'll continue to see the effects of that south and easterly wind drawing sea ice away from the coast as well. So expect more in the way of Polinias across the western coast and northward, uh, perhaps even into the Chukchi Sea. We'll have that sea ice report for you in just a few minutes. But another broad view of this shows that uh, there is very quiet weather for south central and most of southwestern Alaska, save for the western capes, where we have seen some stronger gusts around uh, Cape Newenham and out toward Nunavak Island. But the worst of the weather will be confined for the central Aleutians tonight, again with that high wind warning 
until midnight for your area. Here's a look at the weather map and uh, again the focus is clearly in the west with low pressure down to 945 millibars. Uh, we have a trough of low pressure across the north slope, a few pockets of snow there, but probably not a whole lot to write home about at all. Across the southern Yukon, high pressure showing its uh, lingering impact there across the southern Yukon, but Again, not a whole lot of force with that. We have a lot of dry air moving across the southern interior, the Alaska Range, the Western Gulf, Kodiak Island, and that's all feeding into that system moving in across the bearing. As we head into tonight, look for low pressure to start to fill in, 952 millibars. So again, a sign that it's weakening or more air is rushing into that vacuum. The pressure gradient indicated here by the black lines are lines of constant pressure, and the tighter they are, the faster the wind should be flowing. And you can generally pick out the pattern here in this case, a more of an east and southeasterly wind on the east side of our occluded front and more of a west and northwesterly flow wrapping in behind that. And with that being the case, that takes the low pressure system and those stronger northwesterly winds that were reaching ADAC most of today and tonight and into the very early morning hours out and away into the open waters. So the worst of the weather should be ending as we head toward early morning. Look for the potential of showers across southern sections of Kodiak Island and the Pacific coast of the Alaska Peninsula. And notice there's another system here across the southern Gulf. This will continue working northward, but it also has little eddies on the eastern side of this that are trying to work up closer to southeastern Alaska. Each one of these may bring in a few more areas of clouds, but a lot of this is really going to be confined to the outer coast, if not even further out. So again, just kind of glancing or grazing blows from a little bit of scant moisture working out of the Pacific Northwest. There's a potential for a few snow showers, as always, around Prince William Sound and the eastern Kenai Peninsula. And high pressure is still in charge of the North Slope. There might be a pop-up snow shower there around uh, parts of the Brooks Range. Again, very little threat for accumulating snow up across the eastern sections of the Beaufort Sea Coast as we head into Thursday. Low pressure still filling in across the western bearing at 958 millibars. The front still holding on and trying to maintain what's left of it as we get into Thursday afternoon. It's still south of St. Lawrence Island and generally along in the west of the Pribilovs. You'll notice a chance for snow showers across most of the chain out across the Alaska Peninsula. A little bit better chance for some rainfall developing there again south of Kodiak Island. Might see a rain snow mix in Chelikov Strait and snow showers are possible around the Kenai Peninsula, but we still have a wealth of dry air moving northward. So coastal areas will be about the limit for any precipitation chances, but you may see a few more clouds across parts of South Central and the Copper River Basin as we get into Thursday. As we look at Friday, well, that big vacuum out in the west is filled in and pretty much fallen apart. 990 millibar low is all we see just east of the Kanchaka Peninsula. There will be spotty snow showers across the bearing. But now our newest player is trying to strengthen and move into the central and western Gulf. That'll be at 975 millibars. And you'll notice it's a little bit further east than the last system. What does that mean? Well, more people in South Central and the Gulf Coast, especially the Western Coast and Kodiak Island, are going to have a better chance of seeing some precipitation with this. The pressure gradient is tightening in. Those lines are getting a little bit closer together and we get our stronger southeasterly flow. And again, with a little moisture coming up from the North Pacific, this should make it a little bit easier for some precipitation in Bristol Bay and maybe the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta. That'll probably be in the form of snow showers. We'll see some mixed precipitation around Prince William Sound and maybe into the western Alaska range. It looks like that'll be generally south of Lake Clark and Merrill Pass, maybe creeping northward throughout the afternoon. Southeast, you're still looking at pretty dry weather toward the end of the week. Some showers generally offshore, maybe more clouds than anything else. In the interior, well, not a whole lot more than a mainly clear to partly sunny sky with high pressure across the northern Yukon. A ridge is still trying to hold on here, but this working with the vacuum out across the southern Bering and northern uh, Pacific is guiding all of that moisture from southeast to north and west and across south and western Alaska, probably heading toward Nome by Friday and into Saturday. The pattern pretty much remains the same as we go through the end of the week. Temperature wise, look at uh, southeast. We saw readings in the interior and in the inner channels there in the 20s and 30s, 41 in Sitka, 30s and 40s for southern parts of southeast, lower 40s around Haida Gwaii, 31 in Cordova, 30 in Valdez, 24 for Anchorage, and 37 in Homer this afternoon. Talkeetna made it to 13. It was two below in Fairbanks, three above in Eagle with 15 below in Northway and even colder temperatures were seen across the Yukon earlier today. Eight below is a reading there in Fort Yukon, six below in Arctic Village and temps on the North Slope, teens and 20s above zero. These were in positive territory. 23 in Kotzebue, 21 for Shishmaref and 24 in Nome with temps in Norton Sound in the mid to upper 20s. Uh, Unilocleet saw readings around 25 with 21 in Galena. 
25 around Amonic, 30 for Nunavak Island, 22 in Bethel with Southwest, looking at temperatures in the upper 20s and lower 30s today, 31 in King Salmon, 38 for both St. Paul and St. George. The Alaska Peninsula saw highs today in the upper 30s with Kodiak Island reporting uh, as high as 37 degrees in Kodiak itself, 39 around Dutch Harbor in Unalaska, about the same there for Atka, 34 in Adak with Shemia reporting 26. Overnight low temperatures will be the coldest in the interior and along the Alcan border where high pressure is the strongest, the winds are the lowest, and the sky is the clearest. Look for that inversion to keep readings well below zero in places like Fort Yukon and around Golcana into Northway. South Central still looking at teens and 20s. Might be a little bit colder than it was last night. Teens and 20s for most of southeast, but the further south you go, the closer to freezing you get. Even Ketchikan and Annette, though, might even dip below just a little bit. Uh, the freezing point, uh, same goes for Craig and Klawak, even Sitka a little bit on the chilly side tonight. 34 for Kodiak, mid to upper 30s for the Alaska Peninsula, St. Paul 35, 25 Nunavak Island, 21 in Nome, 22 for Gamble and 9 in Barrow. High temperatures tomorrow. We should expect readings back in the single digits and teens for most of the interior. A few of the classic cold spots will be cold. Two below in Fort Yukon, one below in Eagle and four below for Northway, 10 above in Fairbanks, mid to upper 20s for most of South Central, 40 in Kodiak and mid to upper 30s for most of Southeast. The capital city just hovering close to freezing tomorrow. Uh, the Alaska Peninsula looking at temps in the upper 30s to lower 40s. Dillingham about 36, 29 in Bethel and 26 in Nome with Barrow again at 10 degrees. Here's a look at your flying weather with most of the moisture pointed from southeast to north and west and missing most of the big hubs. You probably won't have too many problems tomorrow. There will be some MVFR around Kodiak by the afternoon, a large part of the Alaska Peninsula and maybe sneaking into the eastern areas just outside of Bethel and probably flirting with regions around Nome, but staying out of Nome proper and also covering uh, Barrow from time to time. Here's your pass conditions. Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass, as we've seen, look VFR through most of the daytime tomorrow. Most of your Alaska Range passes, in fact, all of them should be VFR throughout the day. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass look to be pretty good. Rainy Pass should be okay. A windy Pass should be just fine. Isabel Pass also expected to be VFR throughout your day. Mentasta Pass, we're going to call visual flight rule. Tanita Pass, we're going to say VFR. Portage Pass, maybe in the afternoon, a little bit of MVFR sneaking into the western part of the sound. And as we get to Chilkoot and White Pass, again, things look pretty good for southeast throughout the rest of the week. Freezing levels show that warm and wet air is trying to work its way north and east across the eastern Gulf. Uh, but right now, it looks like the main punch for any warm and wet air uh, that will have any impact as far as precipitation goes, stays well out of reach of the panhandle. The icing potential has some areas across the Alaska Peninsula reaching above 3,000 feet and maybe at an occasional moderate level. There's a potential for some clear ice around uh, 5,000 feet and above for southeast, again with the moisture trying to increase just a little bit. And above 2,000 feet across the western part of the Bering. Most areas don't look to have any significant icing threats at this point. Our jet stream shows a similar pattern to the day before and the day before that and the day before that, at least. You can see the high pressure ridge trying to work its way up across the uh, continental parts of Alaska and even northward further into the Arctic. On the western side of that is a very strong southerly flow of 100 to 110 knots across the west coast. And it's being fueled by uh, westerlies coming in south of the chain from 150 to 160 knots. This very stout Pacific jet is not budging at this point and it is allowing moisture to work in uh, at a pretty healthy rate from even further south across the Pacific. So all of that moisture coming in from uh, depths a little bit closer to Hawaii than Alaska. At 9,000 feet you can see that southeasterly flow mirrored here at this level. Wind speeds coming across Kodiak and the YK Delta as well as Seward Peninsula between 40 to as high as 70 knots. Westerlies coming across the central and western chain at 25 to 40 knots. Southerly is a little bit weaker as you get into the Alaska Peninsula. And our high pressure ridge again guiding in drier air closer to southeast with winds coming into the Beaufort Sea coast at 15 to 20 from the northwest. And they're very light across the interior at 3,000 feet. You can see winds there south and west of the Alaska Range from 10 to 50 knots. Southerly is across most of the bearing. South and westerly winds for Dutch Harbor and Unalaska and really most of the Alaska Peninsula until you get east of the Shumigan Islands and Sand Point where those come in for more of a southeasterly direction at 40 to 50 knots. Southeast again winds are fairly light with high pressure not too far from home. A southeasterly flow there across the outer coast around 20 to as high as 40 knots a little bit further out to sea. 
Turbulence potential then looks like this, generally below four to 5,000 feet across the west, and especially in the Lee and in close to uh, the mountains and hills. Watch for occasional moderate in those areas and around Nome, St. Lawrence Island, the Alaska Peninsula, gaps and passes, and really most of the chain will still have some bumps to deal with throughout the daytime tomorrow. Southeast, south central, the interior, Copper River Basin, and North Slope look to be pretty smooth. That's your uh, aviation forecast. We'll be back with the rest of your marine weather and a look at the sea ice here in just a few minutes. Stay with us. Man, give me a hand. Unfortunately, many of the old treatments hey. can be dangerous. Really, I'm going all right. For example, don't rewarm the whole body by putting the victim in a hot shower. A hot shower or tub rewarms the surface of arms and legs. This sends a message to the body that it's okay to open circulation to those cold extremities. Vital warm blood sent from the core rapidly cools as it passes through cold arms and legs. When it gets back to the heart, that shot of cold blood can cause an unusual heartbeat, which results in the heart muscle starting to shiver rather than pump. The patient then has a heart attack. Another old treatment is to give alcohol. It's also dangerous. Like a hot shower, it fools the body into thinking it's warm when it isn't. Want to give us some coffee? In fact, any liquid can be dangerous no hot liquids. because the hypothermia victim yeah. is not just cold. He may also be in shock, and you can't give any liquid to a shock victim. He could throw it up, draw the vomit into his lungs, and die from aspiration pneumonia. Let's be real easy with him. So, to treat hypothermia safely, be slow and gentle. How you feeling, Hank? Cold, man. Don't jar the victim. A hypothermia victim who is being rewarmed should be treated very gently. A sudden jar or shock can also cause an apparent heart attack. It is a fact that even though treatment is progressing, a hypothermia victim's body temperature continues to drop before it starts to rise again. The victim is very vulnerable at this time. To rewarm a hypothermia victim, use only those treatments that are always safe. The first part of treatment is to take them out of the cold to prevent further heat loss. At this point, the body may not be able to rewarm itself. Blankets will not rewarm a cold body. They only insulate. You need a heat source. First, wrap the cold arms and legs to keep them from rewarming too quickly as you attempt to rewarm the body core of the victim. Then, rewarm the high heat loss areas, the head, neck, armpits, sides, and groin of the victim. The most effective, safe way to rewarm hypothermia victims in the field is to use warm objects and body-to-body -body rewarming. Warm objects are literally anything that is warm, including warm rocks, lukewarm hot water bottles, warm heating pads, warm packs, or even warm potatoes. But be careful. Be absolutely sure that the objects are not hot. You can burn the victim because of their cold-induced numbness. Hypothermia victims won't be able to tell you if the object is too hot. Check on it yourself, like you would a baby's bath. If it feels uncomfortably warm to you, it's too hot for the victim. This warm towel. Let's get this under his neck. Got a stocking cap ready? Yes. Hold his head up and slide it on. Okay, Hank, lay your head down nice and easy. Okay. Let's see if we can't start warming up the sides. Let's go body to body. Let's get your shirt off, right? Body to body rewarming is when one or more warm, healthy people embrace the victim within some insulated shelter, such as blankets or a sleeping bag. If this treatment is used, one should continue the treatment for at least an hour. Okay, let's take it easy now. We're gonna stay here until you get a little bit warmer, okay? Oh, we're gonna stay there forever. Wow. Okay. These rewarming treatments are safe, slow, and gentle. Don't rush them, and be sure to protect the victim from further cold and from shocks or sudden moves. To safely live and survive in a cold environment, you have to know about hypothermia. Hypothermia is the lowering of body core temperature. It's prevented by having adequate shelter for the body, proper clothing. 
recognize hypothermia by the victim's physical symptoms and their exposure to the environmental conditions that cause it. Avoid total rewarming of the body. Do not give any liquids, especially hot liquids or alcohol. It's treated with warm objects or body-to-body -body rewarming, which is safe, slow, and gentle. Hypothermia is a physical condition. It affects the body. Yet a victim's will to live is often the decisive factor in whether or not they will survive. Well, I always thought survival was physical. You know, if he was really strong, you could make it. But for some reason, I just said to myself, oh, heck, I'm breathing, I'm alive, I'm gonna stay with it as long as I can. I did have a lot of water in my suit. I already had hypothermia before I hit the beach. And mainly, it was really hard because I couldn't swim. I didn't have no goal. It was just lay back in the water for the night and see where I was in the daytime. And of course, I didn't know if I'd be near land or not. I was hoping I would be. And um, well, it, it just got to be a battle with myself on thinking of the positive things. It's a fact that people with mild cases of hypothermia have apparently given up and died while others have survived under conditions we'd never believe possible. know what it is, know how to prevent it, how to recognize it, and how to treat it. When was the last time you shivered from the cold? Don't take your eye off of him! Hypothermia is the lowering of the body core temperature. The best prevention for hypothermia is to stay dry. Get those clothes off him! It makes good sense to treat him for hypothermia. Give me a hand. Many of the old treatments hey. can be dangerous. Go on, we're all right. Don't rewarm the whole body by putting the victim in a hot shower. Wanna give him some coffee? And can't give any liquid to a shock yeah. victim. How you feeling, Hank? Cold, man. Be slow and gentle. Nice and easy now. Blankets will not rewarm a cold body. You need a heat source. Lukewarm hot water bottles, warm heating pads, warm packs, or even warm potatoes. Okay, just take it easy now. We're gonna stay here until you get a little bit warmer, okay? Oh, we're gonna stay there forever. Wow. What I tell you last night, Red was going to make it, didn't he? Uh, sea ice is still pulling away from the western coast, and some polinias have been opening up. Some of those a little bit larger than others across Norton Sound and just north of the Kuskokwim and Yukon Delta is there. And as long as we have that offshore flow, and especially a stronger east and southeasterly flow, this should continue to be the case as more of that higher concentration ice is compacted across some of the western areas. We even have a few polinias there across the Chukchi Coast and west of Kivalina inside eastern Kotzebue Sound as well. So watch for changes along the coast as long as we remain in this weather pattern. For Thursday, across southeast, northerly is coming out of the Lynn Canal at 20 knots with a 4-foot sea. Easterly is light across, across Clarence Strait at 15 knots with a 4-foot sea. And also looking for generally light winds across the outer coast, 20 to 25, with seas ranging from 7 feet in the north to about 11 feet outside of the Dixon entrance. For Friday, northerly is around the Lynn Canal again, heading southward into Frederick Sound. Southeasterly is for Clarence Strait at 25 knots. The outer coast sees winds pick up to about 30 knots with an 8-foot sea up and down from Yakutat all all the way to Craig. Now for South Central, look for a northerly flow inside of Cook Inlet. Sea ice concentrations remain pretty low up here across the northern Cook Inlet as well. Five to eight foot seas through Cook Inlet, picking up to 12 foot seas west of the Barrens on a 30 knot wind. And seas are coming up inside Chillicoff Strait on that northeasterly flow for Thursday as well. Northeasterlies to 15 in Prince William Sound and a broad easterly flow sweeping across the Gulf could reach as high as 30 knots east of Kodiak Island with a 12 foot sea. By Friday though, pretty big difference there. You'll notice winds up to 45, even 50 knots that's Healthy gales, if not a little bit stronger, west of the Barrens with an 18-foot sea, 19-foot seas inside of Chelikoff Strait, 40 knots east of Kodiak Island with 21-foot seas there. And we'll still hold on to the 15-knot winds inside of Prince William Sound, but outside the winds are strengthening to 30 to 40 knots with 14 to 18-foot seas as you head outside of Resurrection Bay. Winds also picking up inside of Cook Inlet, 25 to as high as 35 knots south of Calgan Island with a 12-foot sea. For the Alaska Peninsula, easterlies inside of Bristol Bay, northerly south of Sandpoint, east also from Castle Cape to Chignik with a 16-foot sea 
and southerlies north of Cold Bay in the southern Alaska uh, peninsula coastline around the Bering Strait or the Bering Sea coast. Those winds become northeasterly as we head into Friday. You'll look for a light easterly flow inside of Bristol Bay, but seas come up to eight feet there. Uh, strengthening easterly wind around Castle Cape to Chignik with a 21 foot sea and northerlies holding on from Sand Point all the way down toward King Cove with a 16 foot sea on Friday. In the Aleutians, stronger winds as we head through Thursday with a west and southwesterly flow, the strongest out west, 17 to 20 foot seas there with 35 knot winds from Kiska to Shemya and 20 to 25 knot winds on either side of Unalaska and Nikolsky. As we get into Friday, winds continue to diminish. A southwesterly wind from Kiska to Attu, a southerlies around Kiska to Adak, a light and variable flow from Adak to Atka, and then the northwesterly flows kicking in on the uh, western side of low pressure there. You see 15 to 30 knots with a 10 to 12 foot sea. For the west coast, much stronger winds though from St. Lawrence Island out towards St. Matthew, 40 to 45 knots, 14 foot seas from Hooper Bay southward toward McCoryuk and southeasterlies uh, outside of the Kuskokwim Delta, 35 knots with a 12 foot sea. Southerlies still going strong around St. Paul and St. George with a 21 foot sea. You'll notice that flips around to the north and west as we get into Friday. Broad offshore flow from St. Lawrence all the way down to the Kuskokwim Delta, 25 to 35 knots there with 8 to 11 foot seas closer to the coast, 12 foot seas around St. Matthew. And for uh, the north slope there, we skipped a frame real quick, but uh, you can see the northwesterlies will be the rule around Kaktovik. Uh, just to the west around Dead Horse and Prudhoe Bay, you're looking at a northwesterly flow around 15 knots. And then easterlies will be maintained all the way from Point Barrow into the Kotzebue Sound region, about 10 to 20 knots there. So expect that to be the rule as we get toward Friday. Here's a look at the maps once again for tonight. A strengthening storm out across the central Aleutians will quickly weaken as we get into overnight tonight and tomorrow. Low pressures filling in here, taking the strongest of winds away from the central Aleutians, but those regions, especially from Adak westward, are under a high wind warning where gusts could reach upwards of 85 miles per hour. A high wind warning should be expiring very soon for the Pribilovs as conditions will continue to improve for you tonight. Looks like pretty dry conditions, a few more clouds for southeast as we head toward the end of the week and dry conditions for the interior and really not all that cold despite the clear weather. The wet weather will start to focus on south and western Alaska as we head toward Friday with a chance of snow showers in the Chugach range, dry conditions in the interior and a few more clouds for southeast. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. Is most likely a chum. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service.